for the Rockets head coaching job, but there's another team very close to Ty that is in the mix for his services. More on that in just a second. And as for the Van Gundy boys, speaking of Houston, Jeff, who was there for four years, our lead NBA analyst, Jeff Van Gundy, was actually, remember back in the day, guys traded from the Knicks to the Rockets as a head coach. Uh, he had 250 win seasons. He's interviewing with Houston. You, you know, uh, it, it it's so funny to me. Why would you want to do that? Man, you got the sweetest job in the world. Right. Why would you want to stress yourself out, messing oh. around, coaching a basketball team? That's easy. I, I, I can't do it. That's easy because once you're a coach, Jay Will, I you're can't. always a coach. Man, I'm not doing that. I'm, if I'm Van Gundy, I'm sitting right along Mark Jackson them. I'm chilling. Yeah. I'm not stressing my brains I've out. I've spent so many times with big-time head coaches, both on the collegiate level and the pro level. And when you see how they go through their preparation for games, like their whole regiment, that whole day, it feels like they're still coaching. They ask all the coaching questions. It's really hard to break that cycle, especially when they like to motivate and develop schemes. Like, And I've always said, JVG has always done this throughout the course of a game. He'll tell you what he sees from his coaching perspective, and it's never going to leave him. But the stress level of coaching, like he could do all of that, right? When the game start, I don't have no damn vested interest in either one of the teams winning or losing. My stress level is down. I don't have to, you know, you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't have to worry about that. I'm just like, no, nah, man, man, I'm cool. It's an addictive doing, quality, man. I, I get it, but I I'm get doing it. I love it. I'm one of the top dudes broadcasting in uh, basketball. Why in the hell do I want to go coach and have people booing me and screaming at me and Players mad at me, and I don't know. Jay, Jay said, "Coach first, broadcaster second. It's never exactly. going to flip." And you're always watching coaches that you knew you know you can run circles around, like every single day. When you see that, I kind of had that feeling as a player before I, you know, before I settled into, "Hey, I'm not going to come back and play basketball anymore." You look at players like your first couple of years doing broadcast, and you're like, "Man, that guy got a four year, sixty million but that's dollar deal." Different though, Jay. Yeah, but I'm saying that's Jeff is always Jeff. How long, is, how long is how long has Jeff been out? Coaching? Quite some time. I'll tell you here. It's been a minute, though, yeah, right? I'm just telling you, though. It's been a you, minute. If you ever talk basketball to Jeff no, Van I, Gundy, I get it. he all is coaches, a savant. All coaches are that. They got that itch no, the same way. I'm not saying all coaches are Jeff Van Gundy. No, no. I'm Jeff talking Van about Gundy. that itch, okay. though. The itch to get back in it to coach because that's what they are always doing, right? It just – think about it. Bill Parcells called the show to correct me on something because they always coach and they always coach it. But, man, ain't no way in the hell. I'm, I don't feel like doing this. I'm just like, when they said that the other day, I just said this shit. Now, something, he needs to go get checked out. All I'm saying, <laughs> 13 years Jeff Van Gundy has been out. He's 06, on the outside looking in at it. And we, you always said this, though, Key. Sometimes coaches, they need to be unplugged, take some time, yeah. decompress, and plug back years, in. I, I'm saying – but he, it's not like he hasn't been sharpening his knives. No, I get it. In, 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 in the, the thrill of winning a championship as the head coach, watching it up close in person and not having that feeling as a head I get it. But it's just, you know what I'm saying? When you're looking at it, it's like, man, I got the sweetest job in the world. Man, ain't no way in the hell I'm going to go coach. Just doesn't give you the same, doesn't scratch that itch the way doing broadcasting. I can't would. do it. 06, 07, as Jay mentioned, 13 years. His last year in the league, he actually won that year 52 games with the Rockets. He was the Rockets See? head coach for four years, maybe a reunion. How about the other little wrinkle? I think he's still living in Houston, too, probably. He does live in yeah, Texas. He does Texas, live in yeah. Texas. One other Man, thing we should mention that could be really cool, his brother Stan Van Gundy is interviewing with the Pelicans, so if they both back get back into the league, See, it could be a Jeff versus Stan one. next year. I understand that one because he's he just was removed several years ago, so it's really close. But Jeff been gone 13 years, so I'm like, uh-uh, yes, no keep in way. Mind. Stan was with the Heat, of course. He was with the Magic and the Pistons. I wanted to mention this on Ty Lue. We mentioned right now he's in consideration for Houston along with Jeff Van Gundy. Woj, our senior NBA insider, is saying, yes, Houston is in the mix, but there's another team you got to watch out for with Ty Lue. He made a really strong impression on the Rockets organization Monday in meetings all day, and he has been at the very top of the Clippers search since Doc Rivers was let go. And so right now, he's waiting on both teams to make decisions and finish their interview process. For those that aren't aware, Jay, he's a current Clippers assistant. So what's the better fit, Houston or the Clips? The Clippers. The Clippers are. And I, I would say that Houston is intriguing. You know, I this is all speculation. I would assume that Ty Liu is using this for a negotiation perspective. But when you look at rosters and salary caps, 
for Houston between Russ and James, I mean, they're owed close to $250 million for the next three years. Wow. And Daryl Morey is kind of locked into this small ball. They could adjust it. They could probably change it. But having Robert Covington and company, like you're probably going to play small ball next year moving forward. So, look, unless they offer you some kind of eight-year incredible contract, which I don't think they would because their owner, Tillman, has not expressed that they want to overly pay coaches, you know, because of how much he's bought the team for and being cash-strapped to a degree – I think the Clippers ultimately give you the best chance to win a world champion. Yeah, I'm, I'm not even thinking about it if I'm Ty Lue. A couple of reasons. Um, I can get that whatever that stigma is that I won a championship in Cleveland with LeBron James, I can get that off my back with the Clippers. And mm-hmm. the reason I can is because Doc Rivers failed to do so. Right. Now I come in and I take us to the championship or get us beyond the second round or whatever that is. Right. Now I people can say, okay, I am the reason for coaching. Going to Houston, much like Jay Will said, you got a lot of cap issues there, but what offense are you going to run? Are those the type of players that you want to have to deal with? I mean, it's just a better situation because you're not getting – if you're in Houston, you're not getting past Golden State if they're healthy, the Lakers, Denver's emerging. I mean, you might as well just sit tight and try to take uh, Til- the Clipper job. Tillman Fertitta, owner of the Rockets, made his money in casino money. That why he might be a little cash-strapped Seven. at the moment. <laughs> Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN Plus right now.